Hi, it's Friday, December the 3rd, and I continue to read and wonder about the book of Genesis. And what a trip it's been. Uh, today we're starting chapter 16. Um, yesterday we finished up chapter 15, and God has made a covenant with Abraham. God has promised Abraham, sworn to do all that God promised. Um, and, and it's a big deal. Uh, now, I think it has something to do with Abram being vulnerable and open with God. At least that was sort of where my mind went yesterday as I, as I read it and reflected on it. Um, but um, regardless of how you read it, it's a big deal. Um, God has made a, a promise, a covenant promise uh, with Abram. And so that's sort of monumental. Um, but now life goes on. <laughs> that's exactly what's going to happen now. Life is going to go on. So let's pick it up there and find out how life goes on. Chapter 16, verses 1 through 6, life goes on like this. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bore him no children. She had an Egyptian slave girl whose name was Hagar, and Sarai said to Abram, You see that the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my slave girl. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her slave girl, and gave her to her husband Abram as a wife. He went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my slave girl to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Your slave girl is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she ran away from her. Oh, this gets tricky to unpack. Um, what do you allow for being a piece of history? What do you allow for being a different culture? What do you allow for... Just just being different. Um, what do you allow for being a story told as opposed to a historical documentary done in real time? Um, uh, I need to tread carefully. And, um, and if I misstep, um, if I don't consider something that's very important to you, I apologize in advance. Because it's very easy to take this sort of in my Sunday school way and go, well, there you go. I mean, I don't understand. Um, you know, uh, Sarah couldn't have kids, so she made it possible to have kids with Hagar. Yeah, but now we have a story about a human being who is um, a slave girl. And then translation does all sorts of things. But she is a human being who has no agency in this. Right? She, um, in a sense, belongs to Sarah. So much so that Sarah... Sarai feels that if she has children, they will be Sarai's children. I don't know how to talk about that in the 21st century um, without wanting to say, can we just take this story out? Um, that is the way things were done in that time. So can I accept that and read through it and still find the lesson? Maybe, but it's hard. Um, Abram who will become Abraham, Sarai will become Sarah, uh, the father of the faith, his wife, who I, for me should really be the mother of the faith, some of the stuff that she's been through. Um, but they keep slaves. Um, they have people who have no agency and in no way at any time in this story, uh, well, not that's not quite right. In the interactions with Sarah, with Sarai and Abram, Hagar is afforded no agency, no respect. Um, so that is that's that that's a tough one for me to sort of deal with. Um, you know, is this a story about not being patient and waiting on God? Is this what happens when you when 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 God's already God has sworn, right? We just we've had that covenant now, like he once ever in the history of time covenant moment kind of just like god just actually swore to you ritually uh abram uh, and so now you should have faith that things are going to work out um but that's okay for you but apparently sarai isn't seeing it 
And as often happens when couples can't conceive, and I know uh, this again secondhand, not been my story, but I have certainly journeyed uh, through this story with others uh, more than once, um, we begin, well, some people end up blaming each other, but more often than not, they blame themselves. It's my fault that we're not having children. Um, Abram was, was, was struggling with God and God promised, don't worry, you, you'll, you'll have them. But, but Sarai hasn't had that same conversation with God. And so Sarai believes now that it is her fault. The reason they don't have any children is because she is not able to conceive. And so, so we'll fix it rather than waiting on God, rather than, uh, assuming that there could be some wisdom, some plan in all of this, we'll do it ourselves. So... Um, Sarai goes forward and says, you know, um, seeing as the Lord's prevented me, again, I don't know why you believe that, that God has, has done that, but, but that's fine. So God's prevented me from bearing children. Then you should have them with my slave. So go ahead. Uh, and I like this. Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. Doesn't necessarily mean that he agreed with, um, or even took to heart. Um, but so after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, so this is 10 years after they left, right? So, so they've been out here for a long time. They, they, they have established, they've been out a decade. Uh, and Sarai, um, she actively, okay, brings Hagar to Abram as a wife, meaning sleep with her, have a child. And he does that and she conceives. So, so far, Abram hasn't really done much other than listen to his wife. And yes, he wants to have children. Um, and maybe he is starting to wonder whether God's really going to deliver, even though God swore that God was going to deliver, like very dramatically swore that. Um, but nevertheless, um, he has done this. Um, and then, as so often happens, I find in Scripture, uh, the one who can conceive uh, looks with contempt upon the one who cannot. Hmm. I think of Hannah uh, immediately. But anyway, that's another story, another time. Um, and, 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 and Sarai is, is, is hurt by this. She's very hurt by this. And, and in her anger, she gets mad at Abram. Well, may the wrong that's been done to me be on you. What? Um, she looked at me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. Let God decide. And, and I, I can imagine Abram going like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What, what, what? I didn't do anything. You're the one who thought this was a good idea. She looked at you with contempt. She's yours. Then you deal with it. I did not do this. Why should there be judgment on me? I can hear Abram saying it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I kind of side with him on this one. <laughs> um, yes, he didn't actually have to sleep with Hagar. He could have said, no, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I got that. Um, but he didn't. Um... But nevertheless, Sarai is angry at him for what I consider to be irrational reasons. Sarai is not being rational. Now, Abraham is also often not rational. We've gone through his mood swings and his terrifying darkness and all of that stuff. Um, and and uh, always having to ask God again, are you sure you're going to do this for me? I know you said you would, but I don't see it yet. Um I, I guess the piece I can take out of this initially is that even after this monumental covenant with God, Abraham, Abram and Sarai are still living in the real world. They are still imperfect people living in an imperfect world um, and making mistakes. And, um, well not being good people. I'm sorry, I cannot defend um, Sarai or Abram in their relationship with Hagar. And it may be cultural, I, I, okay, fine, except that, except that I need better from Abram. I need Abram to regard Hagar as a human being uh, and, and one with agency, and that hasn't happened here. Um, so, um, so all I can say in that is, yeah. So even after this great revelation, this great promise from God, we still continue to live in the real world. And the real world is filled with irrational people 
uh, getting mad for the wrong reasons um, and uh, lashing out at each other when the problem is, is elsewhere. Why is Sarah uh, lashing out at Abram? Abram has done only what she said. So um, in a way that Abram, I think, has dealt with some of his, what I, and I know I'm totally diagnosing Abraham, Abram without any, uh, without any um, ev proper evidence, but it feels to me as if Abram has, is, is dealing with his, his depression, his mood swings, and sharing those things with God, and in that is, 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 is managing uh, his life, and Sarai has not done that, perhaps. Sarai is blaming herself for not having children yet. Um, but again, God's promise is going to happen, so... So she has not reached that spiritual maturity or that trust in God that Abram has reached. But then even Abram has entirely reached it um, because he's listening to the voice of Sarai. And yes, partners should trust each other and listen to each other. And I get all of that. But I'm just saying your best friend God swore to you it was going to happen. So, so tell your wife to relax. It's going to happen. Assure her um, in the same way that God assured you. So Abram doesn't do that. So what do I make of that for me? Because it's all about me uh, today in the 21st century. And I guess part of it is I, I recognize that Abram, who will be called Abraham eventually, is the father of the faith. Uh, and therefore... Um, I, I I acknowledge him as heroic, as larger than life, uh, as legendary, as as uh, fundamental, foundational to me. Without Abraham, I don't have the spiritual life of faith that I have. But it turns out he's not perfect. He's imperfect. He's a work in progress. I've been watching him progress. And he got to a point where I thought he had it all, but no, he still isn't perfect. He's still, he's still bound by culture. He's still bound by convenience. Um, you know, it's not just culture uh, that he that he keeps slaves. It it, it it's it's easier um, to keep slaves. And we'd say, well, actually, these are just workers, like his herdsmen, and they're well paid, and it's a good life. Yeah, I got that, except for the way that he and Sarai treat Hagar. I don't care how much they pay her. They are not treating her like a human being. Um, and that's wrong. Flat out wrong. Can my heroes be wrong? Can the father of my faith be wrong? Um, in a little thing, but right in another thing. Or wrong in a big thing and still right in another thing. Uh, I live in a, in a time now where we talk about cancel culture, and most of the people who talk about it, I don't think really appreciate it. And in fact, the way they talk about it, it's ironic because everyone's listening to them. Um, so they ain't, aren't being canceled. Uh, but this idea that if you make a mistake, then everything you do or have done is now tainted and or, and or worthless. That's a tough one. Uh, this story suggests to me that Abram is still going to do important things uh, and is uh, fiercely loved by God and is in a good relationship with God, um, but has yet to fully live into the best relation with God because I got to believe that if you're a true relationship with God, you don't treat people like slaves. You just don't. Um, I don't. That, but mm. Yeah, so here's a piece of scripture that I don't know what to make of other than to say... People aren't perfect, but it doesn't mean you can't experience God in them. It doesn't mean that the holy doesn't still act. Uh, the church is far from perfect. It doesn't mean that there aren't some incredible moments that are meaningful uh, and powerful and holy. Um, yes, there are all sorts of clerics and the things that the church have done that, that I just, I would, I, makes me want to burn it to the ground. And yet there are also incredible things that are done. So how do you manage both. I'm pretty sure it's not by pretending that the bad doesn't happen, but I'm also pretty sure it's not by pretending that the good doesn't happen. It's finding that way in between. And for me in my own life, I have these great moments, these revelations, these great moments of faith. And it's like, oh, I get it now. Oh my God, I will never, ever 
forget that and I will always be so grateful in this way. And about a month later, I'm not grateful anymore. I've moved on and forgotten about it. And pretty soon I am doing something else that's not so bright, that's not so faithful. Oh, yeah. Because I also live in the real world and it's not a light switch. It's a process. And just when I think Abraham has gone through the process and come out the other end faithful and connected to God, turns out, no. <laughs> uh, he is more connected. He is more faithful. But he has not finished the job. Um, and so neither have I. So when I fail and I want to cancel myself, uh, I need to remember that um, I haven't finished the job. I'm not through with God. God's not through with me. We're going to keep working at it. And I'm not going to let the failure, the bad, throw away what has been good. I'm going to build on the good. And that's the key for me is to keep building on the good. I'm also going to remember that when it comes to dealing with other people and institutions uh, and acknowledge that, yes, when things are good, they are good. Uh, when things go bad, those are also bad. We need to name that. But they don't eliminate what was good. I, I think of uh, of couples that I've spent a fair bit of time with uh, who have uh, gone through divorce uh, or you know, been in a relationship and are no longer in a relationship. And suddenly there's a temptation to look back at the last 20 years they spent together and say, that was a waste of time. That was horrible. I hated every minute of it. And in the right time and place, I will remind those folk, and I'll remind friends when this comes up too, like, that's not right. They weren't a waste and they weren't terrible. There were great times and they were good things. And that maybe that you have children that have come from that or or, or, or or things that you have learned, you have been shaped by those experiences. And so, so yes, you name the bad and say, those things are not life-giving. I need to move away from those. But you don't do that at the expense of the good. You also name the good and build on those. So as I hear this story, I look at this and go, no, I will not name slavery as a good. Um, much as I want to try to tie it into culture and say, well, whatever. No, it is not good. This is not the Roman slavery. This is not something you can pay your way out of. This person is not regarded as a human being. They have no agency. That is wrong. I will not accept that. But I will not throw out Abram, who becomes Abraham. Um, and nor should Abram throw out either. Instead, I will build on the good, and that is the vulnerability, the honesty with God. It is the covenant. It is the desire for God to make a covenant, to, to swear faithfully to people who are imperfect, who are in process, and usually are moving forward, but sometimes move back. And God still still wants to call Abram a friend, still wants to swear a covenant to Abram. Yeah, that's a lot for me to think about. So you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop and I'm going to think about it. And I will invite you to wonder about it today as well. Um, what am I missing in the story? Um, how do you feel about it? Uh, do we cancel Abram? Do we cancel the Bible? I don't know. Uh, I don't think I want to do that yet. But I will not pretend that that which is wrong is actually good. Can't I can't go there. Um, so, with that in mind, let me offer a prayer. Loving God, it astounds me and sometimes make me, makes me judge you just a little bit. That you love us in our imperfection, in our incompleteness, in... Oh, in our frailty. You continue to love us. You want to be in relationship with us. And so I give thanks for that. God, I... I need to remember that when I have failed or when I'm hardest on myself, when I see others uh, fail and I'm, or betray or let me down and I am hard on them, uh, let me remember that you love us as we live in the real world, as we succeed and as we fail, as we 
grow as we learn. God, may today be part of that growing and part of that learning. And may we always be aware of your love. We pray through the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that's a heck of a way to end the week, huh? Um, so have a fabulous weekend. I hope there is recreation for you. I hope there is whatever it is you need. I hope there's lots of it. And I hope there's so much of it that you have some to share because there are people around you who also need what you have. So may this weekend be a weekend of, of, of connection, of restoration, of great love. And please, please come back next week because uh, we got a lot more story to go. And this one's starting to get tricky and I don't want to do it alone until you until I get to see you again God bless you you know what it means God loves you and God's love moves through you you matter see you Monday <laughs>